All right, guys. One, thanks for letting me record this just in case someone else has questions because they pop up all the time, so it's nice just to upload them. Um, we are talking about deploying apps and managing iPads, so deploying apps to iPads and managing iPads and kind of looking at how we do it. Um, so just to gather some information, you guys have already signed up your VPP. Um, have you also established set up your um, DEP? No. Okay. Um, if I remember correctly, there's a website for Apple that is called School Manager nowadays. Where is that right? I think DEP is just a DEP. They changed it though. Do you remember it used to be that we had a separate site, and then I think it's School Manager. Yeah, it's just School Manager. If you just search for it, that's what I do. Yeah. No end. Typed in Apple School Manager. Yeah, you got there it. it is. Yeah. All right. So if you guys haven't signed up here yet, this is a good place to sign up, um, and you can set up your DEP. And what that does for you, it basically, if you buy some iPads from Apple, I think even Macs from Apple, not just the iPads, when it arrives, it's already pre-configured that it belongs to your school. And so you don't actually have to add that device to your school; it'll just sync with their database. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, and that'll save you some enrollment time. Um, the other things that you want to make sure happen are uh, that you've got your enrollment program token set up with them once you sign up, and you just download it. You, you set it up, and you download the token right from that site um, and get it established, and this way any new iPads that you purchase are automatically in there. And I'd like to save you. It saves a lot of time. It does. There's still a lot of uh, touching of the iPads, though, when you're when you're configuring them initially. Is the enrollment program token pretty easy to renew? Yes. Okay. But if your token is assigned to any other um, program before uh, Intune, just make sure that uh, you disconnect it from that because if you don't, it's going to cause a lot of issues. Yeah. So if you had another MDM that you guys were using previously. Uh, mm -hmm. Make sure you revoke that that token first. All right. Luckily, we don't have another NDM. This is like our first push out. So okay, good. Yeah, pretty good. All right, and then uh, so I'm assuming that you have that set up and you have your NDM <clears throat> push certificate set up, correct? Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, and you guys have got your um, your volume purchase set up, so you're good as well. And I'm jumping around here so that people can just see where it is just in tune mobile apps, iOS VVP tokens. All right. If that if all of that's working well, um, and your apps are populating from the store, correct? Because you have you managed? Uh, to we haven't some? actually. I mean, we enrolled in VPP, but we haven't actually purchased anything with it yet. So we haven't done it. The only thing we've done is the stuff with the free apps. Okay, it's the same process. So you you've gone into your VPP area and you've uh, purchased in inverted commas. You've purchased some free apps, and they've turned up here in your system, correct? Yeah, like Chrome and things like that. Yeah, Chrome, yeah. um, Netflix. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yep, they do populate in there. Perfect. Okay, good. <clears throat> All right, so. <clears throat> The next thing then uh, to talk about is how you are planning to deploy your apps to your devices because there's different ways you can do it, right? You can deploy apps to the device itself, so the apps then belong to the device, or you can deploy them to users, right? Um, is there are there any benefits? that you can think of either way? Or is it just based on the scenarios that we wind up running into that we've really chosen? I'm trying to think back because we've done it so many different ways over the years. Well, we couldn't do it to users this year. It was, they had problems initially, initially yeah. So um, we've but, been doing, we've been just setting to devices. Yeah. But it is working to them as well because we've been doing that to the um, higher grades. Yeah. All right. So I think a lot of this is going to, I'm trying to, rack our brains just to make sure that we're not missing to tell you anything. But basically, 
for example, we deploy to devices currently in our fifth grade, only to devices. Um, and that's kind of neat because we really don't need an Apple ID installed on the device at all. So we don't have to fiddle with that. Now, uh, when you sign up for that school, uh, Apple School Manager, you actually can set up Apple IDs for your students um, and then deploy them as well. There's some caveats, and if I remember correctly, some of them are that even if you set up an Apple ID for them, they cannot install any apps that you haven't pushed out anyways. So I, we haven't found that as useful, especially now that we can deploy these apps directly to the devices. And what I mean yeah. by that is, you know, we, we set up a group, um, which we're in right now, and this one, for example, has uh, 30 members, and we will assign an app to that group that is these devices, and those apps get pushed out regardless if there's an Apple ID on the device or not. And I don't know how much you've played, but the Apple IDs can be a little bit of a nightmare for many reasons. For example, um, if the device is, you know, you, so for example, we're a one-to-one -one program, and the students will take these devices home, our staff have them, and if they've used an Apple ID, for example, that's not ours, and we can't get back into it, uh, a lot of times we've wound up with bricks, yeah, unused un devices that we just can't use anymore, because they've had, is it, what is it, the location thing? The um, lock, find, find my iPad locked in there, and then you just can't wipe the device anymore. It's 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 not been a lot of fun. So I really personally like not having Apple ID on these devices. However, in our our grades that are above fifth grade, because they we switched them over from our old system, our old MDM, they're all user based, and so we're still deploying apps based on a group, but to those users. And for example. Uh, we we set up our groups based on um, graduating year, mm -hmm. so that it just continually moves with them. All right. Um, the groups here, for example, this one uh, is just a user group. And the other thing to note is, because I'm assuming you guys have an Active Directory environment, correct? Yes. Yeah. And I'm also assuming that you guys are on Office 365 since you have this, so you guys have your Active Directory syncing with Azure? Yes. Mm -hmm. OK, because you'll notice here that you can do sync or assigned. So you can have a group that you you know are controlling through Active Directory, and as you add a student, they will automatically appear in that group, and they'll automatically appear in the group here as well. Does that make sense? Or you yeah. can have one that's just assigned, and you just are manually adding them. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. the assigned one are the ones before we connect Azure to um, RAD. That's we actually had created these before. So you might, if you just start with having those connected, you might just have one that is distinct one. Yeah, and I can see there's benefits to both. But being that I'm kind of lazy and I want to manage everything from one place, I like the idea that they're distinct. Um, and this one right here is the no affinity group, and we just labeled it no affinity, so we knew that it wasn't user-based, but obviously you're going to label it however you, you feel best. And then uh, mobile apps and deploying mobile apps. So not that we're promoting any apps, but if you click on this app here and we go to assignments and we select a group, this is where um, we would sign up for that no affinity group. It was 2021. 20, mm -hmm. And I'm not actually going to do it because it's going to show up on their devices if I do this. But uh, once you select it and you select the type, we've been requiring it. You can make things available for them to do it, but I haven't found a reason because we're a, you know, a pre-K to 8 school. I haven't found a reason to do that yet. So we tend to require it. And the license type, because we're going to a device, is the device. And then if you want it based on a user, you just choose the user licensing. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting. Yeah. That's new. I haven't yeah. seen that before. And then you just hit save. And then they're going to get a little message that pops up on their machine uh, saying that Intune's trying to install it. Uh, click OK. and. It's pretty straightforward and easy. The interesting thing is, though, like at the beginning of the year when we're deploying, I don't know, 20 to 50 apps, 
you need one of those little toys from the Simpsons that keeps pressing okay, 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 okay. I wish yeah. there, I wish there was a quicker way to do that. Saba, am I forgetting to tell him anything about this? Um, yeah, they, I mean, the part that they actually physically have to touch the iPad at the beginning because um, they, you have to log the students in with their um, Office 365 account, um, and then it will go through a bunch of options. That, that way it knows. That's if, you're, that, that, that's if you're using user licensing, right? If they are part of... You're talking about when you enroll the device the first yeah. time? Yeah, so when you first enroll the device, there's, there's, two, there's two methods to do it. Right. If you are assigning um, the device, uh, if you're assigning the device to, I apologize. If you're assigning the device to the user, right, you want the user to log in for the first time, so that it automatically associates that device with that user in Azure. Right. Yep. Alternatively, you can set up an account where you can enroll all the devices, um, and then what you do is you associate the device to the group you want. So there's two ways to do that. Does that make sense? Yeah, we do the latter. Okay. So what what else what are you else are you guys interested in seeing or learning? I know we haven't gone into a lot of detail, so I'm happy to do that now. Um, so with our existing iPads, we're still going to have to use like the configurator on the Mac or something like that to push out the initial MVM policy. Correct? We're not going to be able to. We're going to have to touch every iPad pretty much, right? Yeah. Now there is also a um, I forget the name of their app. They've got a Intune. Portal app. When you know, the, you could also company just portal. company portal. You could also install that and then log in the user directly into there, and that'll also associate the iPad to them and in, install it into the MDM. Okay. Um. And we have to, um, in order to put the each device in a different group, we have to enroll it into the group. You might want to show that with their um, serial number. And you can set up different enrollment profiles here as well. Yeah, so let's say if uh, we're on to 2021, no affinity, and um, we want to push out anything to here, we need to have the devices here. So we'll, we just say assign and pick whatever, depending on the serial number, and then say assign that this is how we put them in different groups. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Um, it, That's pretty much the extent of it then, huh? It is. It's. It, I mean, it took us a while to, one, get it working because we ran into this interesting problem because we were in the old system and they were switching us over to the new system. But once we got it working, it's, I feel it's been pretty straightforward. And, and now that we've got it working so we can deploy it to the PCs as well, uh, it seems to be the same process. And if you push anything out and you don't um, see the app show up on the um, iPad, the trick is basically to go to the device right here. Let's say if this is a device. And just come here to more and say sync. And you just hit sync like a couple times and it should push it to um, show up on the iPad. Cool. Yeah. At the beginning, the, the thing was we would push out apps and it wouldn't show up and we had to like hit this like six, seven times and then it still wouldn't show up. Then we had to restart and then push it again. So it was that was just a lot of stuff that um, I think it has gone a little bit better now. 
it's been relatively right. smooth since we figured out the kinks. And so, for example, another thing to keep in mind is we've had, for example, an app not turn up on a student's machine. Um, and then what we do is we'll actually, if we after we do the syncing and we can't get it to turn up, is we'll unassign the app and then reassign it, and that seems to fix it as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, cool. Um, yeah, the, we really appreciate you taking the time to give us a little overview of that. Okay, I'm going to stop recording. Hang on. <laughs>